Ah, uh, patta ah, patta. Ah, uh, patta ah, patta. Ah, uh, patta ah, patta. And everybody puts their hand in the middle. Hi, Vogue. I'm Rosie. I'm Rose. <laughs> Today, I'm going to be making you kimchi fried rice and sumac, my favorite drink to drink while playing APT. <laughs> APT is the name of my uh, single that just dropped. And APT is actually a Korean drinking game that I love to play with my friends. <laughs> I'm so nervous. <laughs> um, in Korea, you call beer mekju. So you mix the two words, so from soju and mek from mekju. So it's called so mek. And it's just like a perfect combination between soju and beer. It just makes the beer a little more alcoholic, which we love. <laughs> And then I'm going to make my favorite snack to have my sumac with. My friends are going to laugh at me when they see this. They're going to be like, I can't believe that you showed the world how to make Cheongyang my mayo sauce. This pepper is called Cheongyang gochu. <laughs> and then it's like the combination between that and mayo. Um, but then we have it with like our dry squid and it's like really good. It's perfect. And you just mix it like this. And you do that. Let me taste it. Mm-hmm. So good. That's literally it. <laughs> so basically, we were hanging out in the studio and I was like, how about I teach you guys some drinking games, Korean drinking games? And then I started doing it. Apatse, which is apartment shortened. And then so it basically goes, ah, pata, pata, ah, pata, pata, ah, pata, pata. And everyone puts their hand in the middle. It's my random game. So it's like Rosie's favorite game, games. I call out like a number in my head as everyone's putting their hands in the middle. And I say like, nine. And everyone stacks their hand from bottom up. Whoever's at the bottom is like, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And whoever gets on top has to take the shot. And I did it and they were like obsessed with it. And by the way, in the process of this, you should never touch your eyes. You'll just be crying the whole night. And so we were uh, playing APT and the next day I was like, okay, today's the day. I think we should write the song and we did. But then I remember going home kind of freaked out. I was like, is this okay that I've written like a song about like a drinking game? Is this too unserious? And so I like got all of the producers and songwriters to delete the song off of their phones. For like a while, they had no idea what I'd be talking about. I'd be like, oh, by the way, I played a few people at ABT and they they were like, what song are you talking about? And I was like, oh my God, I, I totally forgot. I, I made everyone delete it off their phones. But then I'm like, bring it back out, bring it back out. People are obsessed with it. And then we finished it off. So I do that, get the mayonnaise, and I just pour a little bit of soy sauce. I like to make the chili big. But see, this is like only because I love spicy things. I feel like most people would probably find it a bit too spicy. Oh, yes. Yes, you're smart. Thank you. I'm obsessed with cilantro and I put it with everything. This is going to be so controversial because I'm sure there's a lot of people who hate cilantro. But I think I'm a bit weird though. This is just my own thing. Mmm. <laughs> Last year, um, Bruno came to performing in Korea, in Seoul. And my friend was like, do you want to go watch Bruno Mars concert? And so ever since then, I was like, oh my God, I love Bruno Mars. And like, I like play his songs all the time. Fast forward, somebody set up like a meeting with him and I. And I met him and I was like, I was fangirling so much. He like jumped on the song and he had all these like crazy ideas for it. I have like three other interviews today. All you need is a whole chunk of kimchi, the good old spam, gochujang, <laughs> so chili paste, olive oil, eggs, and rice. Oh, and sugar. Sugar, my mom told me not to put it in, but it makes the whole thing so much better. And that's how you make kimchi fried rice. Okay, let's get started. Can everybody tell I'm like really nervous right now? <laughs> Let's set the record straight. I was born in New Zealand and I moved to Australia when I was eight years old. Took an open audition amongst a thousand other contestants who were dying to be a K-pop star. <laughs> to my absolutely surprise, they were like, you know, stop everything you're doing. Can you fly to Korea in two months? I trained for four years, 
And then at the end of four years, I was 20 and I came out as Blackpink, wait, I guess 19 in American age. Doing Blackpink for eight years and I'm still doing it. But this year is the year of my, my album, so. <laughs> my album name is Rosie. And it's called that because my friends and family call me Rosie. As much as this album really is kind of a reflection of, I would say, the past four years of my life. All the stories that I've had that I haven't ever really been able to show, all of that put into this album and I wanted everyone to feel like they were that much closer to me. And so that's why it's called Rosie. If you listen to it from top to bottom and you know like 80% of the lyrics off by heart, then you may call me Rosie. <laughs> I am killing the knife game. <laughs> Just gonna put that on the pan before it gets hot. And then the controversial spam, here we go. Yep. What is spam? I don't even know. I'm sure it's edible meat. Let's hope. Designer gloves. <laughs> but you know what I noticed? I might be wrong, but I feel like Korean spam tastes a bit better. Am I causing drama? <laughs> I grew up eating really healthy. My mom would be like, she's kind of like a health freak and I was pretty good with whatever she gave me. I think I kind of created this love for spam over the, my trainee years. We would eat some crazy things like dumplings. It's like the frozen ones that you buy at the store and then you boil it in water. That with oriental dressing, it's beautiful. This is what you have to be careful. Oh my God, it smells so good. Yes, we have the kimchi in here and the spam in here. We're just gonna like cook it for a little bit. And then I wanna use this. What's fancy, usually I just use a spoon. If you guys wanna see. I have to start a cooking show now. <laughs> so this morning I actually had my very first meeting. It was like offline. And I was really shocked because that was the first time I was talking about the album coming out. And to my surprise, I actually cried. <laughs> And I was like, why am I crying? And I made the best of it. I was like, this is happy tears, by the way. I'm not sad in any type of way. I'm really, really happy. I always knew it is something very personal to me, but it's been a long journey. <laughs> it hasn't been the easiest because in the process of me writing this album, I was trying to be independent. I was out here trying to navigate this next chapter of my life. And so whilst also like, really, really happy moments in the studio where I felt like I wouldn't want to be anywhere else. This is when I put like a little bit of the kimchi thingy in. And then I drizzle it a little bit, a little bit of sugar. And I remember being in a studio when I recorded for the first time. I was like, oh my God, I want to do this for the rest of my life. It was like my own personal like therapy session basically. But I really cannot wait for my fans to listen to my music and feel that much closer to me because it really is like it's my, a lot of my personality that my friends and family know. I'm feeling really nervous. This never gets easy. Okay, no, nope, I suck already. The, this was supposed to be heated. <laughs> Gordon Ramsay would kill me. <laughs> I'm scared, guys. <laughs> Please cut this out. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna turn this off. Ah. Oh, now my hands are sweaty. It's so heavy. Ah. 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 The plating is the most important, is it not? It looks really good. You guys are gonna think I'm crazy, but I always have it with a side of cilantro. Like a whole side of cilantro. Stunning. Beautiful with the side of cilantro. Cilantro makes everything beautiful. <gasps> Do you want me to tell you a secret that I've never told anyone in the world? The ultimate dream of life is to be retired and to own a cilantro farm. I'm gonna have like a Michelin chef create a full cilantro course menu. And then it's just gonna be like a winery, but like it's like a cilantro-y. And then I'm gonna call it the cilantro farm. <gasps> it's genius. And I'm just gonna sit by my cilantro farm and have my like cilantro cocktail. <laughs> That's my dream, guys. That's what I'm gonna be doing when I'm old. But here you go. That's my beautiful kimchi fried rice. 
get the perfect bite with the egg yolk. Yolk is my favorite part. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm really proud. This is the first thing I'm doing today. And this is like already the best day of my life. I think I'm ready to go back and have more of this. <laughs> more of that with my staff. <laughs> it's so good. Yummy. I'm announcing it here. Vogue, this is an announcement and only Vogue viewers get to know about this in, in 20 to 30 years. I'll have my own cilantro farm. It's, called, it's gonna be called The Cilantro Farm. We better like trademark that. <laughs> Bye, thank you.